So, Peter, at the break we were talking about uh, basically the function of the SEC and uh, your sense that um, from the perspective of somebody whose uh, job it is to protect um, uh, clients and uh, pension funds uh, from Wall Street malfeasance, that the SEC has uh, not done a tremendous job when it comes to both um, policing Wall Street nor developing the uh, regulatory framework uh, to prevent another 2008 uh, crisis from happening or one like it. So uh, Donald Trump has nominated Jay Clayton. What do we know about Jay Clinton, uh, Clayton uh, to head the SEC? Well, we have another uh, Wall Street insider uh, from one of the white shoe firms, Jay Clayton, uh, one of the largest uh, defense firms, Sullivan Cromwell, on the street that has done uh, work on behalf of broker-dealers for decades. So essentially, when a Wall Street firm gets in trouble, whether it's with one of the regulators or they get sued by the plaintiff's bar, uh, these types of firm that the firms that Jay Clayton comes from uh, defends Wall Street. Now, you and I have talked about this before, and the biggest problem we have with this, let's grab someone from a Wall Street defense firm like Jay Clayton and put him in charge of the regulatory function like the SEC. It's called the revolving door, where these these very uh, highly qualified lawyers uh, come from Wall Street and they go to the regulators. So they go from defending the Wall Street firms to overseeing and regulating. So they're sitting on one side of the table as a defense lawyer and then Quite, quite frankly, within a week or two, they're now sitting in the regulator chair regulating their old clients, their old friends at their firm, and it's the revolving door, back and forth, back and forth. And as a result, you get this old boy network, all from Ivy League schools, all highly educated, going back and forth from the regulatory side to the defense side. And it's a very chummy, very uh, close relationship that no one wants to ruffle any feathers. Because think about it, if you're on the regulatory side and you cause too big of a problem, you're really banging heads. You go in there and you really come in with a big stick and you really go after people aggressively. When your term is over with the SEC and you've ruffled too many feathers, you've carried too big of a stick, Who's going to hire you back on the defense side to represent the people that you, for goodness sakes, you just tried to put in jail or you just tried to go after? So it creates this very incestuous, chummy relationship called the revolving door back and forth. And we have had this problem over and over again. Not that it should come as a surprise with uh, with uh, President-elect Trump, uh, right. Trump's picks, but here we go again with just another industry uh, insider from Wall Street being asked to uh, regulate his his own clients. It's a joke. Well, so I mean, he, let me do the uh, le- let me play the uh, the devil's advocate here uh, and say, well, you want someone who has experience. Uh, particularly in the way that these um, these companies and these investment banks are going to try and skirt around the law, the way they're going to fight it. I mean, from where would I draw? I mean, from, from where else would I find someone like this uh, if I wanted to? Good I mean, question. Or, I mean, wh- where else would that person come from? A good question. There's two sides of the bar. Not many folks are both defense lawyers and plaintiffs. There's, I, I've advocated for years, put some pro-investor uh, lawyers that have litigated on the plaintiff side, that understand the inner working, that have litigated some of the most complex products, complex issues, that understand just as well as the defense side, why do we pull from the defense pool time after time? It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, we are pulling from the defense side that represents Wall Street. Pull lawyers from the plaintiff side. There are just as qualified lawyers from the plaintiff side that have dedicated their entire careers uh, pro-investor, pro-Main Street, rather than the uh, the fancy white shoe firms that we continuously pull from, and you won't have a lot of these issues. You will see people on the plaintiff side that will try cases, that are willing to go in and try cases, that understand the, the, the intricacies just like the defense side does. There's plenty of plaintiff firms out there 
plaintiff lawyers that have just as good a command as the intricacies of Wall Street as the defense bar does, yet you never see, never see a, uh, a plaintiff pro-investor advocate running one of these big regulatory agencies. They are just traditionally coming from the defense side. Well, I mean, that, that doesn't sound to me like a mistake. That to me sounds like a strategy, right? I mean, and this is a problem that we have with, I mean, the irony is, is that, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, Jay Clayton seems to me could have very well been a an Obama pick or even, frankly, a Clinton pick. And it's because of the money. I mean, at the end of the day, when you're running these campaigns and Wall Street dumps hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars into contributions in these campaigns, you know it's for a reason. When we go up to the Hill and we're meeting with legislators and we know that there have been dozens of lobbyists before us that can go in where we're one of the only pro-investor groups that get up and get in front of uh, in front of these legislators. It's 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 unbelievable the amount of money at stake. And there's a reason why it starts with campaign contributions. It continues with lobbyists. There's a reason why you don't see the plain, uh, uh, plaintiff's bar. There's a reason why you don't see Main Street as a uh, as a voice uh, trying to oversee Wall Street. And it's because of the money. There's no way you can match the money-making machine known as Wall Street when it comes to campaign contributions, and they are paid back in spades. I mean, uh, well, you know, it, it happens over and over again. Peter, let me ask you. We only have about a minute and a half left here. Uh, Clayton, like you say, has worked and represented uh, Goldman Sachs, right? And I would imagine he's going to have to recuse himself every time there's an uh, investigative uh, type of situation. Every major firm out there is firms represented. Okay, and then his wife works at Goldman, Goldman Sachs. Sachs. Right. It seems like there is like there the the Trump administration is just blowing away the concept of conflict of interest, so that it's really they're not interested in it as a concept anymore. I mean, I don't even think he understands what the word conflict of the words conflict of interest mean. I mean, it's so you know, Mr. Clayton, highly educated, highly skilled defense lawyer, but the conflicts of interest whether it be uh, for, through this revolving door, whether it be, you know, uh, your, your wife running Goldman Sachs, how in the world is he going to run an agency with his, uh, with his wife um, sitting across the dinner table from the wealth management side? It, it's unbelievable to me how we keep making this, this mistake over and over again. And when we wonder why every five, six, seven years we have the economic downturn of the century and it's due to the conflicts of interest that are pervasive on Wall Street and now are, are pervasive in our regulators through this revolving door and then family connections. Yeah, absolutely nuts. Well, Peter Mouget, uh, I have a feeling we'll have a, a, an occasion over the coming <laughs> months and sadly a years to talk about how um, we're seeing a rollback, never mind just a, uh, a lack of enforcement, but a rollback of these constraints on the financial industry. Thanks so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me.